With me is the updated Yoga 9i 2-in-1 for 2024, Lenovo's premium consumer laptop. It has been a great option for students and light users since the design was launched several years ago. This year's model has been upgraded to Intel's new Core Ultra 7 and the whole laptop is smaller. This gives you very solid performance and much better integrated graphics, as well as a more portable device. This could open this laptop up to additional users, i.e. software developers and even those doing some light gaming. However, in 2024, many competitors have launched full redesigns of their premium laptops, such as the HP Spectre 14. Those laptops now feel noticeably more premium than this one. So that leaves us with the following questions to answer. One, how good is this year's Yoga 9i? And two, how does it stack up versus its competitors? Let's start with performance as that's really the big change here. The Yoga 9i 2-in-1 for 2024 feels very snappy for everyday tasks, such as browsing the web and using Office. In Geekbench, which tests a variety of common performance tasks, it outperforms most of its competitors. The Yoga performed better in both single-core and multi-core than the 2024 HP Spectre 14 and the 2024 ThinkPad X1 Carbon, but it does fall significantly behind the MacBook Pro 14 with the M3 Pro chip, particularly in multi-core. And while writing this script, this laptop's fan noise was very quiet but not completely silent. And across all light tasks, the keyboard felt cool to the touch. For high performance tasks, we tested how the processor performed when maxed out using Cinebench. The Yoga performed better than its competitors with the same processor in both single and multi-core. The primary reason is because of the Yoga's higher power draw. To get an accurate understanding of just how much better this 2024 version performs compared to prior years, we ran the older Cinebench R23. That's because we no longer have those older laptops here, and therefore we can't run the latest Cinebench on them. As you can see, it smashes the prior models in CPU performance. What's really good is that it doesn't draw that much more power to do so. That being said, switching back to Cinebench 2024, its performance still does not come close to the MacBook Pro 14 with Apple's new M3 Pro chip. And that laptop is way more efficient when it comes to performance per watt than the Intel chip in this one. When it comes to heat you feel, during high performance tasks, this laptop gets very warm on the keyboard deck and hot on the underside at about 50 degrees Celsius. So running performance applications while the laptop is on your lap may not be very comfortable. As for fan noise, during these tasks it gets a bit loud. That being said, it's quieter than the MacBook Pro 14 and the ZenBook 14 when their processes are maxed out. Compared to the prior year's versions, unfortunately the heat and fan noise just has not been improved. While the Yoga 9i CPU performance is better than its competitors, its graphics performance is a little worse. In TimeSpy, it underperformed the ZenBook 14, the X1 Carbon and the Spectre 14. However, the Arc integrated GPU in this new processor is far better than the integrated GPU from prior years. Therefore, even though this is not a gaming laptop, you could definitely play some older titles like League of Legends on it. In terms of heat and fan noise while using the integrated GPU, the keyboard does get a bit warm to the touch and the fans get pretty loud. Let's talk about performance when on battery. It does seem to drop a bit, but it still performs better than the ZenBook 14 and the X1 Carbon. To test high performance tasks while on battery, which I don't recommend by the way as it degrades your battery, we ran Cinebench on a loop for 30 minutes. We got about 70% remaining, which far surpasses the Spectre 14 and the X1 Carbon. Those have smaller batteries though. Unfortunately, while this isn't a bad score, it doesn't last as long as the ZenBook 14, which has the same processor and the same sized battery. For a more realistic test, we played a Netflix movie on repeat over Wi-Fi for 4 hours. It got 67% remaining, indicating around 12 hours for this use case, a decent result. However, it's not as good as the Spectre 14 or the MacBook Pro 14 which both have smaller batteries. Alright, now that I've covered the main changes, here's Gabby to walk you through what the rest of the laptop is like. The chassis is well built and the lid has pretty tight hinges. This means the screen won't fall back if you're pressing on it while using its touch or pen functionality. And this year's version is a little smaller than last year's. It's about half an inch less deep than the prior model and weighs around 100 grams less. This results in a slight increase in portability. Compared to the new HP Spectre 14, it's also 100 grams lighter. Due to the slightly smaller chassis, the bezels around the screen are a bit smaller. The lid is sturdy with a minimal screen flex, but the finish does show fingerprints. The shiny edges around the laptop look dated in 2024, and the laptop's build quality feels a little cheap when compared to other premium laptops. For example, the back panel is not flush with the rest of the laptop, and the edge of the laptop isn't quite rounded enough, so I found that it cut into my wrists a little while using it. It's still not as sharp as a MacBook's though. 
This year's model comes with an updated display. It's a 14-inch OLED panel with a high resolution of 2880 by 1800 and a wide color gamut. It now has a 120 Hz refresh rate and reaches 400 nits of brightness. This is a little brighter than the ZenBook 14 and the Spectre 14, but the display does have some pitfalls. It's glossy and very reflective, especially if you're in a bright room. And the screen door effect is very noticeable. Even sitting further back from the laptop, you can still see graininess when you stare at white content on screen. For an additional $80, you can upgrade to a 3840 by 2400 resolution display with a 60 Hz refresh rate, but I don't really feel like this is worth it. A, the extra resolution on a panel this size doesn't really make a difference. B, the 120 Hz refresh rate of this display makes movement on screen look very smooth, especially if you're planning to do any gaming. And C, if you want longer battery life, you can always lower the refresh rate of this panel to 60 Hz anyway. Finally, PWM flickering is used to lower the display's brightness. The 2-in-1 capability of the Yoga 9i makes it a really versatile option for those looking to use it for everyday tasks like note-taking in class or digital design. The Yoga comes with the new Lenovo Slim Stylus Pen that features over 4,000 pressure levels and supports tilt functionality. The touchscreen responds well to the pen with minimal errors. In this year's version, it can magnetically stick to the lid, but it only attaches at the top, so you'll need to be careful about sticking it to the right spot if you're packing up in a hurry. And you better hope no one bumps it. The laptop does come with a new color matching sleeve, so you could keep the pen in its dedicated slot there instead. But it would have been nice if they had a place to insert the pen into the laptop itself when you're not using it. While the touchscreen on this laptop was enjoyable to use, we found that moving the pen across the screen was a little smoother on the Spectre. Plus, the Spectre's pen was more comfortable to use due to its more standard size and shape. The Spectre's pen also came with two additional pen tips. One thing we do like more about the Yoga, though, is that it lays flat on the desk. The Spectre has a slight wobble to it like it's unbalanced. Personally, I find that using the tablet function while holding it felt a bit awkward. Even though the keyboard is turned off, you can still feel yourself pressing the keys underneath. It's a little disjointing. While using it on a desk, though, this isn't an issue. The keyboard on the Yoga 9i is exceptionally comfortable and has minimal flex. It's got a satisfying click to each key, which isn't overly loud, but the keyboard layout isn't great. It features five shortcut keys down the right side of the keyboard that are very easy to mispress. For example, the fingerprint reader is right next to the arrow keys, the screen's night mode toggle is next to the enter key, and the button to switch between different performance modes is next to the backspace key. Last year, this column of special keys was not quite as close to the rest of the keyboard, so it wasn't as big an issue. Plus, having these keys here shifts the entire keyboard a little to the left and off center. The keyboard does have a nice backlight with different brightness options, and the backlight illuminates the secondary functions well. The trackpad is mediocre. On the plus side, it's very smooth and accurate, and the palm rejection is excellent, but it's a little too slippery and hard to press for our liking. Plus, the click is loud and almost seems to have a second clicking sound to it. This makes the trackpad feel cheap, almost like it's broken compared to other laptops from 2024. The trackpad on the Spectre 14 is much more comfortable to use. Switching to sound quality, the Yoga 9i has excellent quality speakers with a full sound. The sound does get a little piercing at higher volumes, but overall the speakers are definitely one of the high points of this laptop. The Yoga 9i speakers outperform the Spectre in terms of quality and spatial sound. So here's how the webcam looks and sounds on the Yoga 9i. The video and audio quality are very good on this laptop. It can go up to 1440p and records 30 frames per second. The webcam does come with a privacy shutter that you can toggle back and forth, and it also includes Windows Hello facial recognition. The port selection on the Yoga 9i covers most needs. On the left side of the laptop, you get a USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 port and two USB-C ports that both support Thunderbolt 4 and allow for charging. On the right side, you get a third USB-C port that Lenovo states is full function, so we don't know what speeds that one supports. And you do get a headphone mic combo jack. The power button is also on the right side, which I don't love, as you might accidentally mispress it if you're holding the laptop on its side. In the USA, which obviously you can tell from my accent, this laptop comes with 16GB of soldered memory. The SSD is replaceable, although good luck trying to replace it. The back of this laptop is brutal to take off. Several screws are hidden underneath the back rubber foot, which is glued so tightly to the laptop. If you are wondering though what Wi-Fi is in it, it's Wi-Fi 6E. At the time of this video, you can buy the configuration with 512GB of storage for an MSRP of just under $1,500, and you can upgrade it to the 1TB version for around $1,500, so obviously you should get that one.
And this leads us to our conclusion. The 2024 Lenovo Yoga Nun i 2-in-1 is definitely a better laptop than prior models. You get a much faster and more efficient CPU, which also delivers substantially better graphics. Plus, it's a bit more compact and that makes it a little more portable. At the end of the day, this laptop is still a great choice for light users like those using it for school or office work. However, when it comes to opening itself up to additional users, those who demand performance, we don't love it. That is because for performance tasks, this laptop has loud fan noise and gets hot to the touch. At full price, the Yoga Nun i is about $100 cheaper than its main competitor, the HP Spectre 14. If you're comparing between these two laptops, the Spectre 14 net-net is a better buy. It's been fully redesigned this year and it's a more premium laptop on many dimensions. We feel that the Yoga Nun i needs to be about $300 cheaper than the Spectre to make it viable. Both these laptops regularly go on sale. Heck, right now the Spectre is available for $300 off, making it cheaper than this laptop. At that price, you should obviously buy the Spectre. Even if the difference is $300 in favour of the Yoga, you may still consider just waiting for the Spectre to drop in price. And our new, custom-built website is the place to stay on top of the best deals on both these laptops. Not only this, but you'll find all the laptops that we recommend for various types of users there too. If you like this video, smash the like button and get subscribed. Not only does it help this channel grow, which means that we can create more content for you, but it makes our dearest mothers very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and we will catch you later.